Van brand LDV has returned to the commercial vehicle market with this large segment V80 model. True, it doesn't have the sophistication of the volume players in the large van sector, but it wouldn't do because it costs a fraction of what those vans are priced at, despite the fact that it will probably serve most of the needs of your business just as well. In short, if you need profit more than polish, this contender could be worth a try. Today, perhaps more than ever, cost control is an overriding priority in modern business. And if you operate one, you'll be particularly conscious of that when it comes to purchasing the commercial vehicles upon which much of your company's livelihood may depend. If you deliver in bulk, you'll need a large van or perhaps a small fleet of them. And if that's the case, then the primary selling point of the contender that we're going to look at here is going to be difficult to ignore once you've been briefed about it. Welcome to the LDV V80. Now that selling point doesn't really lie in any of the things that van makers usually talk about, technology, carriage capacity, or engineering. No, let's get straight to it. This LCV is spectacularly affordable. I really do mean that too. Large segment models, Citroen's Relay, Vauxhall's Movano, and Ford's Transit, for example, tend to start at an XVAT price of around £25,000. For an LDV V80, the XVAT starting figure is around £10,000 lower than that. Yes, you heard that right. Now imagine the saving that kind of reduction would generate for your company if you were buying a small fleet. There are several reasons why LDV is selling this model so cheaply. First, it needs to re-establish itself in the British market. Today's business very different from the underfunded and rather shaky brand of the same name that eventually collapsed into receivership in 2009. LDV is now owned by Chinese manufacturing giant SAIC, the seventh largest vehicle maker in the world and the current owner of MG. That'll eventually mean a series of new commercial vehicles, but while those are finalized, the brand has dusted off the old Maxus model it was selling a decade ago, just before the receivers moved in. They've now rejuvenated that product and rebadged it as the V80. Now the resulting package is inevitably a little behind the current standard when it comes to things like running cost efficiency, drive dynamics and media connectivity. Still on the plus side it promises to back up that super low pricing with tough practical virtues and it can even deliver a slice of modern technology in the form of an all electric variant. So does the proposition on offer here make sense? Well that's what we're here to find out. So let's start by telling you about the engine. Uh, there's only one on offer. Uh, that's a decent enough 2.5 litre four cylinder diesel from Italian firm VM Motori, which is the same unit you'll find in some older Jeep and Chrysler models, as well as a TX4 taxi. It's been matched with a six speed manual gearbox and front wheel drive, and it puts out 136 bhp. So yes, the performance on offer is likely to be quite sufficient for your needs. If you can't quite remember what large panel vans were like to drive 10 years ago, it all comes flooding back once you set off down the road in an LDV V80. Uh, commercial vehicles back then were pretty noisy, which was expected in that era. Uh, but if you come to a V80 fresh from a trip and a modern LCV design, uh, you'll have a much more car-like perspective on refinement. And inevitably, it's one that this Chinese contender is ill-equipped to match. Uh, fortunately, though, you will rarely find yourself exacerbating the situation situation by revving out through the gears because the engine has quite a narrow power band and unless you stay in that sweet spot that's somewhere between 1800 and 2600 rpm uh, the v80 tends to run out of puff quite quickly Still, the reasonably slick six-speed manual gearbox has been set up to make the most of the 330 newton meters of torque on offer, and it has a generally well-spaced ratios, although six could do with being a little longer to improve uh, highway refinement. Now, when you are up at cruising speeds, you will notice a fair bit of wind noise around the mirrors and the door openings. Uh, on the plus side, though, uh, when time comes to slow down, you'll be thankful for the reassuring feel of the standard all-round disc brakes. Uh, uh, brake assist complements the usual ABS system for emergency stops and ESP stability control is standard too. 
like all vans, particularly large ones, uh, the cornering demeanor of this one improved quite a bit when there's a bit of a load in the back. Uh, when you are running empty, the leaf springs at the rear are particularly prone to being unsettled over bumps. And whatever your V8 is, load configuration, you'll certainly feel the uh, larger potholes and tarmac tears that you'll come across in typical urban motoring. Now, if your business deliveries will be uh, primarily urban-based, then LDV hopes that you'll consider the alternative all-electric version of this model, the EV80. Now here, a 56 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery combines with a 100 kilowatt electric motor to produce an operating range of up to 120 miles. There is nothing much wrong with the way this V80 model looks. Uh, you certainly wouldn't immediately pigeonhole it as a dated design. The front end styling is clean and modern with a short dual crease bonnet flowing down into a chrome finished front grille that shows off the LDV Mark's new era corporate branding. Uh, flanking this aperture are swept back headlights uh, that feature these smart lower daytime running light strips. Moving profile and the dull slab-sided look that you expect from a large van is broken up a bit here by this central swage line that flows from the headlight to the tail lamp just above the door handles. As you can see, we've got the long wheelbase body shape here, which is 750 millimeters longer than the entry-level short wheelbase model. Now, most bars will want to avoid that base variant because it only comes in low roof form, although that configuration actually might be quite useful if you frequently have to access car parks with height restrictions uh, long wheelbase models like this one come only with uh, medium or as in this case high roof height options. At the back, the body color bumpers look quite smart and there is the option to get this central upper panel glazed, although can't really see why you ever would. Um, what you can't have is a one-piece tailgate. Most businesses don't want that as it restricts the way that forklifts can get in to load the rear of the vehicle. Right then, let's take a seat inside where the first thing you'll notice is that the instrument binnacle isn't where you'd expect to find it. Uh, instead of being viewable through the four-spoke steering wheel, the two main dials have been positioned instead at the top of the silver-coloured centre stack. Now that doubtless makes things much easier for the Chinese factory when it comes to producing left and right-hand drive models, but it's not really ideal from a user point of view and it requires you to sometimes take your eyes off the road a little more than you might ideally like. Uh, still, you do quickly adjust to this and there really aren't any other major ergonomic issues. Uh, the driving position is aided by the de rigueur facial mounted placement of the gear stick, which falls nicely to hand. The seating placement is high and commanding and the vast windscreen gives a clear view ahead, uh, plus there are large mirrors with manually adjustable secondary mirrors below them. Uh, the driver's seat, that could do with a little more rearward travel, but otherwise it's pretty comfortable with eight-way adjustment, uh, which is just as well because you can't properly adjust the steering wheel. Uh, it's a pity you can't get a leather covering for this either to alleviate the rather slippery feel of this cheap plastic rim. Uh, we found the cruise control system a bit difficult to get grips with too. It's a curious setup that's operated by pressing a button on the dash to set a speed, uh, but cancelled by a press on the brake pedal. As usual with a large van, a three-person front bench is standard. Uh, it doesn't though incorporate the kind of fold-down centre seat back that uh, rivals provide. Uh, there is room underneath the passenger side of the bench to store various items that you might want to keep out of sight though. And other stowage areas in the cabin include a reasonably sized glove box, uh, deep door bins, twin cup holders and a couple of shallow dash top trays either side of the instruments. Uh, this high roof body style gets an overhead storage shelf too, but just be careful what you put on that. Uh, you don't want hammers and tools crashing down on your head if you accelerate off in a hurry. What else? Um, well, unfortunately, you can't have a DAB radio, but you do get a USB port, an aux in point, and a 12 volt socket, uh, plus Bluetooth phone connectivity, and even optional smartphone mirroring connectivity if you want it. Uh, there's a full height bulkhead that you'd expect from a model in this class, although this one doesn't include the, uh, the lower flaps that you'll find in some rivals that allow you to push longer items through from the cargo bay. Uh, on the plus side, though, it does include a 
built-in window um, so you can keep an eye on the baggage area if you're carrying items that might be prone to sliding around. Build quality, well, that seems okay. Uh, past LDV models like the Pilot, the Convoy, and the Maxus were screwed together in the Midlands, but for all its British branded hype, the V80 is constructed in China at an SAIC factory, just like the MG cars also produced by this Asian maker. Overall, probably what's most important is that this feels like a cabin that could withstand the rigors of a hard working life. Whatever else we say about this van, the thing that you're going to most keenly remember about it is its price. So let's drill down into the detail of that a little here. All the figures we're going to quote are ex-VAT ones, as we'd assume your business would have VAT reclaimable status. For the V80, things kick off at around £16,000 for the short wheelbase, low roof model that marks the entry point to the range. Uh, most company buyers, though, are going to want the long wheelbase body style that we're trying here, which costs from around £20,500 in medium roof form or from just over £21,000 in this high roof guise. LDV is also offering a five-year finance package with XVAT prices starting at less than £200 a month. Of course, there are other body styles if you want them, with chassis cab, tipper, drop cider and Luton variants all available in the twenty to £25,000 bracket. Uh, LDV is also targeting the people carrying market too, with a seated up Mini B 15-seater minibus variant that's based on the long wheelbase high roof panel van and costs from just over £32,000. The other option is the electric version of this model, the EV80. Now the XVAT list prices here take quite a jump. They're pitched from around £62,000 for a long wheelbase panel van or from around £58,000 for a chassis cab variant. Before you get too put off by that though, do bear in mind that a plug-in government grant will shave £8,000 from those figures. And of course, your running costs are going to be massively lower, which LDV reckons will actually make an EV80 slightly cheaper to run than its D diesel equivalent for an urban operator uh, running the vehicle over a five-year period. We'll get more into that in the uh, practicality and cost section. So next, a few words on the value proposition in comparison to obvious rivals, which of course is where this LDV model really scores. I and mean, essentially here, what you're getting is a really large van for the money you'd pay for a compact one, like a Citroen Berlingo or a Ford Transit Connect. It's pretty hard to argue with that kind of proposition. And if you concentrate on this long wheelbase body style, the one that the vast majority of buyers will want, uh, you'd probably be looking at needing six to seven thousand pounds more to get a comparably capable competitor in this segment. And of course, there are plenty. Obvious rivals include models like the Ford Transit, the Volkswagen Crafter, uh, the Mercedes Sprinter and the Iveco Daily, but you may also have been considering the uh, two other designs that dominate the large van market. Firstly, there's one that's badged as either Vauxhall Movano, a Renault Master or a Nissan NV400, or there's a design marketed as either a Fiat Ducato, a Citroen Relay or a Peugeot Boxer. If having considered all those other alternatives, you conclude that the price saving offered by a V80 is just too large to ignore, then you're going to need to know just how generous LDV has been when it comes to standard spec. So let's see. All models get metallic paint, daytime running lights, a near side sliding side door, a remote central locking, reverse parking sensors and powered adjustment of the large heated side mirrors. Inside there's uh, air conditioning, cruise control, electric windows, a three-seater front bench, a full-height windowed bulkhead, an eight-way adjustable driver's seat, Bluetooth phone connectivity and an AM FM audio system with MP3 compatibility. Safety kit includes twin front airbags, ESP stability control and a tough safety cell. Plus of course ABS brakes with EBD, electronic brake distribution and BAS, emergency stop braking. As for options, well, you're probably going to want to talk to your dealer about a ply lining kit for the cargo area. Uh, we'd also probably add in the TomTom -tom navigation system, uh, the hard-wearing seat covers, a second sliding door for the driver's side, and possibly also a tow bar. Other extras you could add include a roof rack, a rear view camera, and an upgraded infotainment system too, with a 10-inch screen and smartphone mirroring capability, so your V80 really can function as an office on the move.
We've talked elsewhere in this film about the three main panel van body styles being offered to LDV V80 buyers. Uh, short wheelbase low roof, long wheelbase medium roof, and as in this case, long wheelbase high roof. All based around a 3.5 tonne vehicle mass. So let's check out the practicality being offered in a little more detail. As usual, these two big rear doors open out first to 90 degrees and then they can be pushed back to 270 degrees if you remove the stays and fold the doors around to magnetically click on those uh, two large humps. The rear door opening width is 1550 mils, while the rear door opening height on this high roof variant is 1790 mils. That's up from 1580 mils with the medium roof body style. Uh, there's a low floor loading height and inside you'll find decent load area lighting, nine tie down points and an easy clean non-slip cargo mat for the floor. Although most operators will want to specify a proper ply lining kit like this one to protect the interior metalwork. On this long wheelbase model, there's 3,300 millimetres of cargo area length and 1,770 millimetres of cargo area width. That narrows to 1,380 millimetres between the wheel arches. The cargo area height is 1,925 millimetres. That's up from 1,710 mils with the medium roof body style. That means a total cargo volume of 11.6 cubic metres. That's up from 10.4 cubic metres with the medium roof body style. As a point of comparison, the entry level short wheel base low roof model can only take 6.4 cubic meters so yes providing you go for the lengthiest wheelbase most of what you want to take will probably fit now the payload figures aren't especially notable by class standards though in the long wheelbase range you're looking at 1419 kilos for a medium roof model and 1389 kilos for a high roof now if you're loading in from a the side uh, there's enough side door opening width 1290 millimeters to be able to slot in a euro pallet and whatever your roof choice you get a 1590 millimeter side door aperture height Uh, on to running costs. Now you won't be expecting the fuel and CO2 figures of this rather old two and a half litre V8 Motori diesel engine to equal the currently prevailing class standard, and they don't. Uh, though you should get a reasonable driving range from the 80 litre fuel tank. LDV quotes a combined cycle fuel figure of around 30 mpg, which is about 10 mpg adrift of obvious rivals. Same story with the CO2 figure, that's quoted at 250 grams per kilometre, and a typical rival these days is rated at 170 to 180 grams per kilometre. As for servicing, well, maintenance intervals are set at every 15,000 miles. Uh, some fleet customers may be put off by the relatively small size of the LDV dealer network. Uh, at the time of this test, there were only 23 UK operators. However, the brand points out that many of these have affiliates who will also take care of servicing, so you should never be too far from a workshop. Plus, franchises will tend to bend over backwards to look after you far more than a mainstream branded dealership probably would. Of course, none of this will be an issue if you opt for the all-electric EV80 model with its 56 kilowatt hour battery and 100 kilowatt electric motor. Uh, this has a claimed driving range of 120 miles in between battery charges, uh, the length of which will of course vary depending on the kind of charger you're using. LDV says that with a rapid charge DC charger, an EV80's battery can be charged to 80% of its capacity in just an hour and a half. With an AC charger, that time will be extended to six hours and if you ever had to charge your EV80 from a mains plug, it would probably take over nine hours. The asking price of the all-electric model is certainly potentially off-putting, but the figure that LDV says that you should be looking at isn't that of outright purchase, but five-year overall running cost. In rough terms, uh, the brand reckons that over that time, an urban-based company would probably spend around £70,000 in buying, maintaining and fueling a conventional diesel-powered large van, as opposed to around £68,000 for an EV80. And that does doesn't take fully into account uh, inner city congestion charges that are likely to rapidly rise over the next few years as new emissions legislation starts to bite. 
Let's drill down into that a bit. For every £100 you'd spend fueling a diesel van, a full electric model like an EV80 would cost just £16 to charge. Plus, with typical inner city congestion charges now running to over £240 a month per vehicle, the case for exempt EV vans becomes even stronger, particularly since they cost less than half the usual amount to service. In short, it'll pay to do your homework here and take the long view. Because of the prevailing legislational trend, the industry predicts that electric vans will be able to achieve much higher second-hand residual values than their diesel counterparts too. Uh, it is a bit early though to predict what that will translate into for a typical EV80, but we can tell you that residuals for this ordinary diesel V80 are expected to stand up surprisingly well. Experts' glasses expecting that a volume, long wheelbase, high roof model like this one will retain 39% of its original purchase purchase price after the industry standard a three-year 60,000 mile operating period. To give you some perspective on that, a much pricier rival Renault Master van will return just 25% of its original purchase price back after the same period. What else? Uh, well, insurance is rated at Group N2 across the range and you get a much better warranty than most uh, other brands provide. Uh, LDV offers a five-year, 125,000 mile warranty and five years of roadside assistance. New vehicles don't have to be as expensive as they are. Dacia has proved that in the car market. Now LDV is doing the same when it comes to commercial vehicles. You do at least have a choice. Now it's true that in this case LDV has delivered that choice by rebadging quite an aging product, but there's nothing very much wrong with the fundamentals on offer here. Certainly the running costs are a way behind the class norm, but better than average residual value should compensate for a lot of that leaving this model's strongest sales proposition pretty much intact, namely the way that it offers you a large van for the price of a compactly proportioned one. Of course, there are other issues here, principally in the areas of cabin quality and diesel refinement, but you might be inclined to excuse these in view of what you're paying. Anyway, LDV will shortly be bringing us all new LCVs that deal with these problems and which set fresh standards for the brand. In fact, some of Chinese owner SAIC's cutting edge technology is available now in the form of the full electric EV80 model that the government wants to incentivize you to consider. That other, commoner volume brand large van you may have been considering is almost certainly not yet available with that kind of powertrain. We were surprised by that and actually by much else with this vehicle. Now yes, the V80 is only a starting point for the LDV brand in our market, but it's still probably a large van that many more small to medium sized operators really ought to be considering. After all, when it comes to price, size matters.